Hello! <laughs> I'm very happy to be with you all today and I've got a lovely book. One that's going to make you smile. <laughs> Smiling's great um, and kids love to smile. And um, if any of you had a chance to see the Splash video that I did about Maria von Leishout's book Splash, there are real similarities and that's because there are universal themes, um, and one of them is dealing with sadness. So, let me begin, and this is written and illustrated by Lee Hodgkinson, and it was originally printed in England, and it reminds me a little bit of Lauren Child's work in the, the multimedia. Molly Leach, I don't know if this, who this was designed by, but Molly Leach was one of the first to originate this kind of really um, very stylized, very fun design. Also Myra Kelman's another one if you're interested in that kind of thing. Mom says, I can't have any more cookies until dinner and that includes crumbs and little broken pieces. By the way, I am definitely not sulky. I am not particularly chipper or chirpy either. Usually these things are me in a nutshell, but not today. This is because I've just realized something terrible. Oh, what's it going to be? Something really terrible. Look how adorable that is. Very, very super stylized, childlike illustrations. Oh, and the other thing, you know, the language. Um, She's putting things in, I'm not, you know, not sulking, not chipper or chirpy. Um, certain things are emphasized, that really pumps up the drama. And fun, a very fun use of fonts. <laughs> and isn't that adorable? And look how simple it is. The other thing I want to point out is the use of negative space. The things that are not um, utilized, the area. And often that can be just as important as the positive space. And it's very sophisticated if you can use a bunch of white space. And you see that in a bunch of books these days. Uh, just because it is so um, visually pleasing. I have lost something very, very important. What I've lost is my smile. I wish I could find it. If I had my smile, everything would be very nice and normal indeed. So there she is. What do you do if you lose your smile? You go and you put up little signs to find your smile. Lost and found. <laughs> Reward is one humbug. Here she's using tissue paper on these puddles on the ground here. And it's very expressive. I like the brown type. Unusual. And we like unusual, we like different, we like new and novel. And this book has a lot of that. And so even though she's smiling, the flower is drooping. See, I love to smile. Smiling is one of my favorite hobbies. Smiling makes me feel sunshiny and as fresh as a daisy, whatever the weather. So the first line she's telling, I love to smile. Now that can be kind of boring. But then she unpacks it and she starts with the C. So she's really engaging the reader here. My dad says I should try to remember where I last saw it. And I think, ridiculous. If I knew that, then it wouldn't be lost, would it? Dad says I will just have to look for it. So it goes through her looking for her smile and of course and it's a, a classic plot driven story in that you know she tries all these different things and she doesn't find it. Um, but then in the process she ends up doing all these fun things. She looks under the bed and look how fun that picture is. And that great use of negative space, the black on, of the bed as she looks underneath and all these fun line drawings here. I'd say she's used a pencil 
for her outline here, a really dark pencil, and then enlarged it to get that kind of texture in her drawings. And don't you love the colours? I mean, pink, yellow, lime, green, and black. Very graphic, very cool. And we also see those colours on the cover as well. Okay, I'm not going to read the whole thing out because I want you to run out and either get it from the library or buy it. And I'm sure Lee would much prefer if you buy it. And it is one that would be great to have and to revisit in your library and over and over because there's a lot to learn from it. You know, the language here, perhaps I dropped it on the floor. If there is a floor under all this stuff, I don't think I have ever seen it. It could be an ocean made of wibbly wobbly jello for all I know. So we've got both the rhythm, uh, the alliteration, and the wordplay here, which really makes it a lot more fun. And there's a raspberry jellyfish right over here. I suppose I'd better clean up. This is highly unusual, but I'm desperate. And then we see this little character here who reappears. And we meet all these fun and fabulous characters throughout. This is um, Glitter Gills. The, uh, the goldfish. Very fun and I love the way that she's distorted the, um, the fish tank. It's just really neat. And then we meet the twins and Mr. Honeycomb. Let me find Mr. Honeycomb. Oh, this is a really fun spread too about where mom's telling her all the places that things are often found when they've been lost. Well, seeing as I am here, I'll just have a quick game with Mr. Honeycomb. He is one smart cookie. It's just a very adorable, very playful. There's not a lot of sort of deeper, well, there is, and that it's about dealing with having the blues and the blasts. And I'm not going to give it away, much as I would love to. Um, but I'm just going to share the end sheets with you because they're so much fun. And if you remember, end sheets are what hold, what helps bind the book together when it's a hard copy. So I am going to say thank you, Lee Hodgkinson. Thank you, Balsa and Bray, for bringing this book to the U.S. And thank you all for watching. That was lovely, wasn't it? Bye.